CIA Solutions is a digital advertising and film company. So what we do is that we have a large indoor network of screens around the Peace Region in northern Alberta that companies come and see us and they blast um, their advertising through. So it can be in form of uh, graphics that say, you know, uh, store sale now, or it can be a video with closed captioning. That's how we started. And then we bloomed off into from there being able to offer customers into outdoor billboards. Those are the 10 by 20 double sided LEDs. So now a customer can come uh, get their advertising and all the indoor network and then the outdoor. And then from there, because you need content on digital, anything digital in this new world, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those things, video is king. So um, by default, we managed to be uh, one of the lead, actually, the leading filming uh, companies in Northern Alberta. And we film a lot of productions from uh, uh, basically documentaries to doing uh, film camps to uh, commercials, branding, uh, profile videos, you name it. In the digital world, we film it. For our company, we are definitely um, unique of what we, what we do. There is other filmers, but because of our angle of, with the outdoor screens and everything else, we're... Yeah, we're, we're unique, yeah. Well, I think how, how it all started is that I started doing business in town of selling advertising and filming. But then um, as I discovered my own heritage, uh, my daughter went to, uh, my youngest daughter, Summer, she ended up going to the Friendship Center. They had a program called Head Start. And that's where they work with uh, young Indigenous uh, children pre-kindergarten and teach them fundamentals. And it's supposed to actually in, inject culture back in the family, yeah. which it did. Next thing you know, I was right involved with the movement, and um, then I saw the need is that, you know, the one thing I learned growing up is that I wasn't, I was aware of all the horrible issues, but I was never aware of the, the programs that are trying to solve these problems. Right. And so right. I found myself in the position to be able to market and advertise mm -hmm. and use my own creative vision to bring that message out to the public. And then so I did all the Friendship Centers in Northern Alberta's uh, videos. And then I went to Horse Lake mm -hmm. and uh, did a nice uh, profile video on their community and the things they're doing for the future generations and exploded and actually made wow. people very happy. And Horse Lake actually uh, rallied behind it and it's got a lot of views, and I was really very much a lot of pride saying right. that I got to highlight a good thing in, on a right. reservation. The theme that I guess I, I naturally, I guess the theme sort of sort of came out of um, a need for communication between there is the indigenous, there is indigenous and non-indigenous, and the bridge gap right. is when people are aware, they make better informed decisions. Right. So. The theme that's been coming out in the videos, just those profile videos, is the positive courses and things that they're doing in their communities, in our community. Mm -hmm. And then it makes it relatable. So, like, Horse Lake has the MMS Society, and, you know, they talk about uh, the, I think I said it right, MMS Society. And they work with a lot of youth for their um, uh, career fairs and so forth. So there's a lot of programs that they're doing to help assist and push the future generations for information. Then you have things like uh, traditional past society. Now, uh, just starting to work with that, but it's still, it's that information to get out into the public so people can see what these organizations are doing. And then the Friendship Center movement too. The more people are, or, 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 the more people are educated on what's going on, then the, the stereotypes dissolve. Right. So now when people watch these videos, they see Horse Lakes MS Society doing uh, things on uh, for their youth as like their career fair and stuff. Right. So that dissolves the stereotype. They're doing they're being proactive towards and it also solidifies it in in um, their own communities too. Of like this is what we're doing to move ahead and you know just um, bring opportunity to our youth. And it's the same thing in in the urban side of the fence with Friendship Center. These are the programs that we're doing that are are able to help the community and help urban indigenous living in our community to still find their culture, and that's what they're doing. And then even with this medium, like as I said, like there is the traditional past society that yeah. does the same thing, a lot of cultural teachings and everything, mm -hmm. and enhances to bring that message to the public, because when they understand, the people come out to help. I think actually, for the business end of the world, because I am um, by default, uh, just by learning business myself, um, I ended up joining Rotary, and that's the right. business community and stuff. And just those videos, it actually puts a face to the name. Okay. 
So it's like, so yeah. they s- literally physically see online what is going on, and they see the Frans, they see the yeah. Kellys, they see the the everybody in our communities, right, and the Walters and whatever, and then yeah. they all put it together and be like, hey, how can we go help out that? Because it brings that human connection. I find by using the this new digital outlets like social media and stuff and Mm -hmm. and filming and stuff like that I find the measure of success is just the awareness and engagement that I see from city officials other business owners of sort of like hey I want to help out for this cause Um, you know the uh, reconciliation is huge because the more you educate people on the cultures and stuff around them the better informed decisions they make yeah. humanize it when you hear yeah when you hear initiatives like when you hear um in northern Alberta, you hear horse lake uh, sturgeon lake uh friendship center um you a lot of people who don't know about these things they just sort of have the okay that's an indigenous thing right and there's some problems there yeah. you know what i mean and then it just sort of stops there but then by opening up these avenues so people can physically visit that world and see them and see how the people are interacting and the effects it has by good storytelling, which I guess this is a natural, this is a new form of storytelling. These, um, it's been, oral tradition has been passed down through our culture for years. And now this is the new way of oral storytelling. And it, and it reaches the other, this medium reaches the other side of the fence. So you want true reconciliation? Well, show the positives and high. You can, the news right now highlights all the negatives and then you have a society that's all negative. Everybody's all worried about what they look like. They're worried that they're not, you know, not using the right shampoo, wearing the right jackets. But when you highlight positive movements and nothing but the positives and you can drill the negative out completely and just have this whole generation thinking we are less than because look at all the problems. But I think the time now with this medium is to use it powerful in the positive sense of like, look at all these positive initiatives, things, and I want to get behind that and push it, keep right. pushing it forward. The CIA designed a program, right, and we called it uh, Fright Camp. So, but it was the second we call our first camp we had was called Identity. And that is where we wanted to take kids and film teach them film teach them how to use this medium and hands-on experience so we will pick a project and we're like okay we're going to film this last one we did was uh, a a scary movie right called uh, what was it called simple seance and it was going to be released Halloween so we wrote this script we designed the program where the students came in and rotated through cinematography makeup Mm. da 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 and at the end of the program they had a short film that was shown all across the internet. It took us about two months to organize. So the cool thing is that we had this concept for the project, but then this wonderful program and a wonderful company called Telus Story Hive. They do great things for, um, they're really working with filmmakers and the youth, and especially they're, they're trying to promote, they really want to promote uh, indigenous uh, filmmakers and camps and stuff. So that was what you did here in our community. Yep, so they funded us, so we had the concept, they came in, they funded us, we told them how we want to do it hands-on uh, instead of just, the, the first time we did it, we had a week of courses in our class, right. in, our, in our office, and then the second week they were filming a documentary. This time we're like, nope, let's just go straight on, hands on for we have the project and they learn how to film it. And at the end, they get a full filmed uh, short film that they can watch for the rest of their lives. So they, some of the kids were like, it changed like from the buzz I, I got now that we had letters and stuff and heard from parents that it changed some of their kids' perspective of what they wanted to do in their life like more towards the creative more Mm -hmm. towards like hey i can actually point out social issues because the whole time we're drilling to them is like you are learning this skill but the power of the media can influence the thought of you can influence people's thoughts by what you put out in film so they learn that skill we showed up with the script but the hands-on yeah with the hands-on and set design we did making it happen yeah but then when it actually came to filming they showed up we made it, uh, we work the same program uh, we did with uh, the public school system, PWA. Mm-hmm. And so their film camp, their film course that we do once a year, which is similar to the identity, was sort of blended into one and we made that whole course. There is a behind the scenes documentary out right now that one of the students made about the whole process of our first film camp we did. Well, the cool thing was, yeah, it was wow. indigenous and non-indigenous students learning this. Yeah. So at the end, they had that short film. We had uh, mm-hmm. one of the actresses uh, for the short film is indigenous. 
and uh, Larissa did a wonderful job. And then you had all these other kids, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, working together for a common goal, and it changed their perspective because instead of just... A lot of times when they're kids, when you teach somebody, they sort of get the kid treatment. They get the, okay, well, here's a camera, but not a really good one, and here's this. But for us, we were like, no, let's film something with some quality and drive it to the kids that, hey, it is possible. And they did it all. I guess to sum it up is knowledge is power. And we have to teach our youth on both sides of the fence. Of we have to acknowledge Canadian history and learn to work together to change history. So the more we teach our youth about where they come from on the Indigenous side, the more power they have. And we teach them culture and teachings and hands-on for all the youth on both sides of the fence so they just know the basic of where everybody's coming from, then we can move on as society and handle bigger things. This is just a bump in the road, Right. right? So this will all change in time. But for right now, we just have to focus on education and getting more awareness of this is always in your community, but now you will acknowledge it and become just a regular thing, which is good. I see Indigenous education as in informing the general public of issues, um, history. Uh, okay, let's talk school systems, right? I find Indigenous education is huge because then it brings an understanding at a younger age of why things are happening. So um, definitely the involvement because the Indigenous aspect of our of our wonderful country is that we were first and we're never going away. Yeah. So we should honor that. Learn about learn about our cultures and the different things. A little bit of hands on. There's always got to be a mix of a little bit of hands on and a little bit of like book work of like. Before everybody showed up, there was flourishing trade, there was flourishing laws, there was governance, there was bigger dynasties. You go into that more in the South America end of the world, there was like bigger dynasties that's built the Aztec pyramids and it spilled off in North and then there lots of trade on the coast and everything. When you grow up and you start learning education in school, you, you, you sort of figure out, you're like, oh, look, we're learning the indigenous about Haida and stuff like that. But you sort of get this impression that before anybody showed up, everybody was just running around with sticks trying to make their long houses and stuff yeah. and doing whatever. But then uh, you learn later on when you start getting educated, especially this day and age with the Internet, that <laughs> that wasn't the case. It was its own flourishing society and governance and just because of just the way the, uh, the ideology of the time of like colonialism showing up, taking land to get resources, that is what ended up happening. And then you had, uh, you know, the whole society was degraded to, but survived still. I would say definitely uh, the book work end of it, like in the social studies end, but I would say uh, some practical too. Uh, some practical teachings. The more I thought about it, it was like, yeah, to having some of that. Okay, well, we're learning about this and we're going to learn about why drums mm-hmm. are whatever, but this is how you do it and this is the meaning behind it. Right. So I would say a little bit of a balance of hands-on and textbook. And it's also it's a, a self-empowerment too because when you learn um, from myself who is uh, half Cree, half mm-hmm. German, you know, all Canadian, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> but... Um, yeah, just that whole understanding of myself made such a huge difference in my life when I grew up. Mm-hmm. The more I understood both sides of my heritage, mm-hmm. the more I felt centered right. and the more I felt included. But when I first learned, and it's also spoon feeding the history too, because when you don't get taught anything in school and then you learn everything that's happened, you're horrified. Right. You're just sort of like, I can't believe oh my like it is overwhelming and then you understand and it makes you mad because you're like why didn't anybody just tell me this and mm-hmm. from the beginning and this is what i'm learning now and this is all the issues it's it seems right. bleak right. but if you educate the young now and you educate on for both sides of the fence then that puts everybody in it does promote healing and it also promotes change for future generations because nothing happens tomorrow it's yeah. It's down the line. I don't know. I think if you're just taught the awareness of the situation from a young age, you just understand it. Yeah. You know, the part the part that's overwhelming is the non-understanding and yeah. the, like, well, where is everything at now, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. that's the part that's overwhelming, right? right. 
So it's more of like you just start at a young age and it's sort of like, hey, this is how it was, but mm-hmm. you're fixing it by learning this and we're fixing it together. And that's the healing part right there in a nutshell. It's like boom, boom, but look at us all work together. Empowerment. It's totally empowerment. Yeah. Knowledge is power. In the next 10 years, I'd like to see it for my, like, I have daughters, right? And I would like to see it more as a common curriculum thing to learn about Indigenous awareness. Just history, so forth. I'd like that to be more common. On the digital end of the world, I would like, I would like more of, um, I would like more awareness. I'd like organizations, Indigenous organizations, to get out and use these tools that are free more. Mm-hmm. Like, when we did that profile video for Horse Lake First Nations, mm-hmm. I was so proud of it. And I saw the pride on every one of those people who contributed to that. Mm-hmm. And then when the message got out there, all the people responding, yeah, you always get some negative, but there was a lot of people like, wow, they're really doing things, and it, like, empowered the community. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's got to keep going on. Like, we all... These mediums for communication are free. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, it's all free. So it's not like the old days where you had to, yeah, I'm a film crew, you got to pay me to make do something good, but you can launch this without the other trillions of dollars and put it on your website and put it on those to communicate with the public. You don't need a huge a huge massive corporation to do this. Like I'm going to go to CBS and put one commercial. You can just keep this updated all the time and just get the public curious. And the more people are, you're out there, they're curious. They want to ch- come and check it out. And then they engage. And the more they engage, you get true reconciliation because they're not seeing it as an organization. They're seeing it as like an us. We're together. Relationship. I really, yeah, we're together. Well, I would say just more education of how to use it. Right. You know, definitely like, you know, and and also you have to pass down that. Okay, I'm talking all digital, but there are certain mm-hmm. things that have to be passed down, like through elders and stuff like that, yes. right? Yeah. But on the new communication end of the world, like it has to be taught. Like even it's so new that people are still learning and then it changes again, right? So I think it's just uh, as, the, as our young ones grow up from this generation on, I don't think this conversation is going to be relevant in 10 years because it'll be like, well, that's just how things roll. My childhood was in the 80s, right? Yeah. So I didn't grow up with a computer and yeah. that, but then I remember the first computer. I was like, wow, that takes a long time to fire up. I'm going to leave now yeah. and I'm going to go play. play, go hang out with my friends and I'm going to do things. But then that slowly changed and now this generation doesn't even know what life was like pre-internet. Yeah, so it's generation that's right in there. Yeah, we're at the cusp. It's almost like we have to do the catching up now. Our youth already know how to use it. Yeah. We're not using it effectively to teach them. Right. So we just got to learn right. fast and teach them because so they're already using it. it. That is a huge thing because right now they're getting blasted with the Kardashians. They're getting blasted with all this, yeah. this, I guess, sort of shallow way of using it. They're getting blasted with so much information, but it's sort of like, but as soon as you teach them the skills of how to film, how to do recordings like this, how to utilize the net and use it for positive, Mm -hmm. you're totally right. We could focus on another Kardashian in the future and talk about their shoes, but we could educate our youth that if they want to make change, they can do it through the digital medium and communicate with thousands without the trillions of dollars it used to take to communicate.